and welcome back now this video is a bit more analog than it is digital but it has a very much analog and digital conversion flavor and it's all to do with the arduino project that you saw in the last video about the christmas tree project where effectively we're converting it into a sound to light unit so this unit you're looking at here at the moment um, is a better amplifier than the one I showed you because it's a two-stage amplifier this one so you've got one transistor there and one there just one moment let me get my new pointer right there we are max just for you so we have a transistor here BC548 um, and another one here and some negative feedback going on here but this microphone here if you tap it I'm going to hold the Bluetooth speaker that I've got wired up to this up to the microphone there we are quite audible and more to the point between the, the me bashing on the microphone what else do you hear exactly nothing this is pretty much silent now in fact I've got some video to show you that I took from the oscilloscope down in my workbench so let's have a look at that first and then come back to here and talk about the circuit diagram. So this is a signal without any music playing. So let's play. And you can see it responding quite nicely to the peaks in the music now. And this is exactly the response we want, of course, when we're talking about a sound to light unit, isn't it? The background roaring you can hear is in fact from the oscilloscope, there's sort of a fan in there, that's what you can hear. And this is a voice check, I'm about, I don't know, 30 centimetres away from the actual microphone and as you can see it's picking up um, predominantly the bass part of my voice, although it's uh, probably from about mid-range down to 100 hertz or thereabouts. But as you can see it's very, very sensitive. Um, now I'm not shouting by any means, I'm uh, how should we say projecting a little bit for the microphone but that's about it um, let me try a different track um, trying to get the, a better track I think really let's have a look at uh, this one here now you can see here it's actually responding much better to the bass rather than the treble let me stop speaking and you'll see what I mean The speakers are probably about um, 60 centimetres away, maybe just about 50 to 60 centimetres, nearly two foot. So with no sound at all, you can see that there's very, very little noise. Watch this. I think the Arduino should be able to differentiate now between a signal and noise very, very easily. Great, let's give it a try. So uh, we'll talk about this um, in a bit more detail and I'll show you the circuit diagram. So this is the microphone preamplifier. Let's draw our power rails first, plus five volts. There's the power to our electric mic microphone. Um, that goes into the base of a transistor. Um, with a little bypass capacitor, a second stage transistor, output or a 10k variable, um, split the potential so that we get some bias. That capacitor there determines the frequency response and that resistor determines the gain. We'll talk all about a bit more about this when we actually plug it in for real. This is quite a bit better than the original amplifier. Um, and in fact, it's still wired up to the project for the Christmas trees. I'll just drag that over here to show you what I mean. So that's, oh, so that's this one here. This is the single stage trend, uh, transistor amplifier, which worked, don't get me wrong, it wasn't bad. But the gain wasn't really high enough, to be quite honest, and there was a little bit of noise on there. So um, I thought, well, if you're going to stand that Christmas tree up in the room somewhere and you wanted to pick up people's voices, um, television or you speaking or whatever, music generally in the background, then we needed a bit more amplification. 
So we're using a bit more maths in this circuit and uh, determining what sort of feedback we want by that, uh, that resistor there. Additionally, you may notice this little LED flashing away. This LED has got nothing to do whatsoever with this amplifier, but it's got everything to do with that Christmas tree project. So, what can we see about this little LED? Well, after I unpacked the Christmas tree project last time and uh, saw that all the LEDs were crystal clear, I thought, well, I better go down and find out which one's the red ones, which one the green ones, and so forth. And I plugged this into a power supply and it immediately started glowing blue, red, green, purple. It faded between colours and flashed, as you can see. Now remember, the effect you're getting on camera is nothing like real life. I don't know why, but all LEDs seem to be displayed as sort of a white blob in the middle with just a halo of colour. Now in real life, it's not like that. These are most intense. And I'm thinking, oh dear, this is a bit of a problem now for my Christmas tree project because I was going to control these via the Arduino um, to flash them or fade them. In fact, they're doing their own thing and they won't work if you start putting pulse width modulation down them. They just effectively turn on. So this LED is effectively a tri-color LED. In fact, it might even be more than that. I don't know, can you get every single color in the rainbow with red, green, blue? Probably. So this has got a little tiny chip inside as well it rotates around all sorts of different colours, and then when it gets bored with flashing them, it fades between them. I mean, it's a brilliant, absolutely brilliant effect, but absolutely no good for the Christmas tree. In fact, we don't really need an Arduino if you're going to use these LEDs at all. So I thought, well, that's not what, what I really wanted to do. So I had a look on um, Banggood again, or Gearbest as it was, and thinking, what's gone wrong? I'm sure I didn't order this. So if we have a look at um, this diagram I have on Banggood now, not Gearbest, you'll see that in fact there are two different options. So let me just switch over to that and uh, we'll have a very quick look. Right, here we have the two items. Now this is from Banggood, not Gearbest. Now Gearbest is where I bought the kit from, but I know full well that I didn't mean to buy this beautiful multicolored LED. That wasn't the purpose at all. It was this version here, look, which um, is, well, the two kits are identical apart from the LEDs on them. Now, this one's got red, green and yellow LEDs. You can see the colours quite clearly there. And this one's got the, as it says, colourful light. Well, it's this multicolour one, which is so good, I'm going to keep for either that Christmas tree, but do it as a separate project, or just use them in projects going forward, because they are very beautiful. And as I say, the effect in real life is much better than what you're seeing here on screen. So this is the one that I expected to be building and these are the LEDs um, on the outside, these ones here, that um, I expected to be controlling with the Arduino pulse width modulation and indeed this sound to light one. So quick as a flash, I've ordered this one for £5.88 which is very nearly twice what I paid back in March. I guess we're coming up to Christmas prices go up, the pounds dropped. So all that adds into the fact that the uh, the price is more expensive. And in fact, I don't think I'd actually buy it for 588 anymore. Well, I would now I've got an Arduino to control all those lights, but that's a different story, isn't it? That's what we're working towards. So anyway, that's what's happened then. There's a bit of confusion. I bought it from Gearbest. I got, I got this version here, when in fact I intended to get this version here, but I've ordered this now, and that'll be here within a couple of weeks, I'd imagine, if the uh, transport from China is as good as it's been lately, so let's hope so and we can carry on with our Arduino project. As far as I can tell, all other aspects of these projects are identical, it's just the LEDs that are different. So anyway, that's the slight confusion that happened over there. And in the meantime, as I say, we're updating this here. This, this microphone circuit for the sound of light is much better and these LEDs we're going to keep for either for a, a separate standalone Christmas tree that doesn't require any Arduino at all, so it doesn't really have its place in these videos, or I'll just keep them for some other project. I mean, they are really, really nice. It's probably worth buying that Christmas tree project, in fact, just for the LEDs. They're that good, really. They're only three millimeter, but they do cycle through all the different colors, red, green, blue, purple, what else? Uh, well, I guess they fade between all the colors of the spectrum, I suppose. It's, it's amazing how they do it. 
Right, so that's um, all well and good, and uh, things have worked on well. Incidentally, this little thing at the back you're looking at here, look, this is um, a micro USB to four um, header pins. And I got this precisely so I could run my projects off a 5 volt supply like this, plug it straight in here rather than from the Arduino. And lo and behold, I've had to use it almost immediately, so that's pretty good as well, isn't it? This, incidentally, is um, a standard um, power supply 5.5mm, 2.1mm um, socket. This is the socket, and it's got little tiny tags here. In fact, let me rip it out and show you. I've put um, some heavy duty tinned copper wire in there just so I can plug it in. These are just little tiny things you press down, you press it down, and that comes out, and put it back in and let go, and there. Pretty secure actually, well, very secure. And then you've got your socket on there. These are ideal for projects like this, absolutely ideal. It's not the first time I've used it. It means you can plug in nine volts in there or whatever and uh, experiment away. Right, now that's all well and good, but there, there is now a downside to one of my purchases. And every now and again, I guess you're gonna come unstuck. Well, I have, I feel anyway. Right, let me bring up my browser window and we'll have a look at one of the things I purchased, uh, that window there. Right, here we are. Now, I wasn't exactly running short of resistor. I've got, I've got um, the entire E12 range in my workshop, which you may have seen uh, from one of the uh, videos I've previously done. So I've got all the values I need. So it's only £3.74 for 56 different values. So that's the E24 range, or could even be more than that, frankly, 56. Anyway, 560 pieces. So you get 10 of each for £3.74. And the reason I bought these is because I wanted some high value mega ohm resistors. I, went, I had to, a one mega ohm, but I wanted, uh, you know, 1.8, 2.2, 4, 5, and they're included in this range. And the reason I wanted those because I was experimenting with that touch capacitance switch that I've used in the fridge alarm and the rain sensor alert, both uh, transmitter and receiver now. So I thought, well, if I'm, if I'm going to buy half a dozen resistors anyway, um, I might as well buy a complete set for £3.74. I mean, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Or is it? Anyway, they arrived, and why am I disappointed? Well, let's go back to the workbench and have a look. Here they all are, and uh, each set of ten has been marked on it by some poor soul in China to tell you what they are. And... Whilst many, many people will need to have this written on here so you can read this, unfortunately, I'm not one of them. I can re read resistor codes because I learnt them when I was about 14. So I can read a resistor code and it, like a bit like a foreign language really, after a while you just look at it and you understand implicitly what it's telling you. So, you know, a 4.7K resistor just looks like a 4.7K resistor after a while. Except I look at this one, this is 270, and I look at this one, I go, um, sorry, which end do I start from? First of all, let me put the light down here a bit, see if this makes it any better. I go, well, which end do I start reading from? Because on here, that light hasn't actually helped, has it really? I go, which end do I read from? Because as you can see, they're equally spaced. The, um, Normally, with um, a resistor, they start at one end and there's a gap at the end, or at least a gap between bands. But on here, no such luck. So what does that mean? Well, it means that this is not a four-band resistor. It means this is a five-band resistor. And I'm as lost as the next person when it comes to a five-band resistor code. I was under the impression that they'd introduced a five-band resistor code to cater for increased tolerances on resistors. And then they abandoned the idea because nobody could get hold of them. Well, it looks like they're back in force. And for me now, to read this, I'm just thinking, I can't. I cannot read this. I don't know which end to start from, although it becomes pretty clear very quickly that some of these values are nonsense if you start reading from the wrong end. Um, but it's just, I don't know, I just can't use these in my project, even though I think I might have used one down here, actually, because Adam, I think I might have used the 1K ones. But I read that, and that does not look like a 1K resistor to me. For one, it's got too many bands. There's no red on it. That's the other thing. The red on here looks more like a brown to me. It's only when you actually see the brown, you realise that the red is a red, rather than the brown. Does that make sense? 
but the red is very brownish so that doesn't help one tiny little bit so I've got all these resistors now um, all 560 pieces well it's probably about 540 now because I have used some um, all dependent on the fact that somebody's written the value on here we are somebody's written this value on because I just struggle like mad it's just it's like you've learned Spanish all your life and suddenly you're presented with Italian Italian or Portuguese it looks familiar and it looks like you should be able to understand it but you can't I can't and I'm thinking do I really want to put these in my project do I really want to put them on my breadboard in fact um, and the answer is not really but what do I do with all these I mean to throw them away it'd be criminal wouldn't it I'm I just don't know what to do the problem is you see you take them out of these little packets where the, where the value is written on you take them out you use them in your breadboard design or even in your printed circuit board or whatever script board and then you look at them in a week's time and you go what value is that I can't work it out I can't tell at a glance what it is just to prove the point let me just see if I can zoom in onto that as it stands at the minute and we might get a better understanding there we are now that's Still in focus? Yes. Right. Now here we've got some standard um, four band resistors, right? Now this is a 3.9K because it's green. Um, what am I talking about? Orange, white, red. 3.9K. And this one here is a 470 ohm. And it's gold at the end. So that's a 5% resistance tolerance. And that, that one at the back, you can just see, starts with the yellow. Look. 47 yellow that's 470k now I can tell that at a glance and then you got these ones in the middle this thing I'm touching at the moment what is that well I can tell you it's a 1k but one sorry about my big fingers I'm just trying to turn it round a bit so we can see it a bit better for a start look at the difference in color compared to these ones here um, well or lack of color for a start the blue body doesn't help compared to these these beige bodies where the colors really stand out and look at it even I mean even off camera it's almost as bad as it is on camera it's muddy color muddy color slightly less muddy color with a muddy color and you think which end do I start from I'm disappointed very disappointed three pounds 74 is not the issue really it's just that it's really criminal waste to actually chuck them all away but I'm thinking what else am I going to do I think I might have to bite the bullet and say, do you know what? That was just a bad purchase. Get rid of all these because they're just confusing the hell out of me compared to these other ones and find some equivalent ones that uh, I mean, even four quid or something, five quid. There's so many of here and quite frankly, so many values in here that I'm never, ever, ever going to. In fact, there's some values in there that I've never even seen. There must be some really, really intense range they're using beyond E24 so you've got E12 which are the basics that's what I got E24 which is a more refined and granular range and I'm guessing there's one above that and I'm guessing this is it because if I've got 10 there was 56 different values here I mean phew. anyway so you win some you lose some but I'm disappointed with that and uh, to be quite honest I'm, I'm disappointed with this this item from Banggood nowhere does it say incidentally in the uh, instructions that this is a a five band but it does say look quarter watt metal film resistor accuracy of one percent so they are pretty good resistors it's just that I can't read the color code uh, there we are win some lose some as I say we'll think about what we're going to do there so time's beaten us again so next time I'm going to show you a bit more detail of the circuit diagram and how we came to it and actually plug it into the Christmas tree project when it arrives the red green blue uh, sorry red green yellow version from Banggood and uh, we'll take it from there but in the meantime thanks for watching I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting please leave comments down below subscribe share and give me a thumbs up thanks for watching see you in the next video